Okay. <clears throat> um, hello and welcome. My name is Livia Cohn. I'm the executive editor of Three Pines Press. And we do have a major project in the works. It is called Dow and Time. And it's a series of three edited volumes that have come out of the international conference on the topic of Dow and Time that was held in Los Angeles in June of 2019. And our first volume in the series called Dow and Time Classical Philosophy is ready for publication and can be purchased on our website, threepinespress.com. And it is my great pleasure today to have one of our contributors here with me to tell us a little bit about herself and her presentation. And her name is Sharon Small. Welcome, Sharon. Thank you, Livia. Hello. Good. Well, I'm very happy that we have this opportunity. And let me first um, ask you a little bit about yourself because our readers may have read your little or may be able to read your little bio on the website, but um, tell us about your training and, and your um, position right now. Okay, so I was um, born in California and moved to Israel at some point. Um, and in university here, I became interested in Chinese philosophy and that's how I you know, started learning Chinese and went into the direction of China and then um, I decided to do my PhD in China. I got my doctorate from Peking University. And now um, um, my position is in Shanghai East China Normal University. And currently I teach online because I'm stuck out of China. That's right. <laughs> That's right. China does not let anybody into the country. Is that right? Well, it's very limited. Okay. You need so, special but, limitations. And, and so, um, so what you hear from China, um, life there has normalized to a large extent? Yes. Yes, That's people are hear. back in classrooms. That's all oh, very good. Okay, but they're still very nervous about getting more virus infections from foreigners. Exactly. They're mm -hmm. afraid we'll bring it back. <laughs> And so you're currently living in Israel. Um, where are you in Israel? I'm in um, Haifa, which is the northern part of Israel on the coast. Okay, and the, the situation there is fairly difficult from what I understand. Yes, yes, but my city is, is better than a lot of other places, so. Okay, so so you still are you don't go out too much, and people are still very nervous about the virus. Yeah, and everyone wears their masks, and no restaurants are open, and no bars. Wow. All right, so um, let's talk a little bit about your interest in Chinese philosophy. Um, so your your main interest is ancient Taoist philosophy, which is the pre Han period, like um, five hundred to two hundred BC. And um, your main um, concern has been what is known as excavated manuscripts. So what exactly are excavated manuscripts? So um, over the last, let's say four decades, no, even five decades now, um, a lot of these texts have been found in tombs, especially um, the Lao Tzu, for example, they found um, several different versions in different places and um, other texts that are kind of in line with Taoist thought, you know, and um, that have kind of a, I, I would call it dialogue with um, the Lao Tzu. Of course, there's many different things in the, um, in the tomb findings and, you know, things that could be called more confusion and, um, Plenty of plenty of interesting stuff, but the what I um, found most interesting is all the cosmological texts. Oh yeah, okay. So so the the texts in the tombs were usually associated with some local rulers, and I understand that the um, the texts were there um, in the tombs of like a crown prince or somebody who was being trained to become a ruler, and so 
they had to understand like a lot of ethics and governmental things, which is the more Confucian side of things. But then they also had a lot of how the universe works. Is that right? Right, right. right. Um, well, the Gordian tomb, for example, um, people believe it to be the um, tutor of, for the crown prince, or the one who actually educates the next ruler. And there's a lot also, uh, in addition to the Confucian and ethical and governmental concerns, also three versions of the Lao Tzu and uh, the Tai Shan Shui that's very cosmological and talking about how the universe, how the time, how seasons, all that work. Right, and so in this volume, um, so your dissertation works on these manuscripts, but, and you have other projects about this topic. And you also have published in the Journal of Dell Studies, um, working on these um, issues, a very good paper in there. And then, um, so in this time volume, you focus particularly on cosmogony and how the universe is created and how time is conceived. Um, so can you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, um, one of the things I found in these, um, in some of these manuscripts is that uh, there is always this primordial uh, state of the cosmos in which everything is conceived to be like still, not moving and um, constant, let's say eternal, um, used through the character of like hung and things like this. And then there's this point where things begin and time involves and um, this is kind of a movement. We always see this through movement of movement of day and night, movement of the star, movement of the seasons. And um, yeah, and then there's another thing that I found interesting is the return. That eventually everything is cyclical. And this can come from like cosmic observations. You have day, night, day, night, and the seasons that, you know, go on and, um, so, uh, so we're, seeing like a, we're seeing a mixture of a linear conception of time where you have a state that was not, and then something happens, which is a development, and then things are there. Um, but then once things are there, you have a cyclicality in that. So is that about an accurate description? Right, you have a cyclicality. And also, I mean, eventually things go back into stillness in some point, you know, we have the movement and then stillness and the, um, I think the Tai Shang Shui says something that the Tai, Shang, the tai stores in water and moves with the seasons or moves with time. So it's kind of like both stillness and movement that create this cycle. So it's a very complex, um understanding a very intricate mixture <clears throat> of cyclical and linear of stillness and movement of moving forward and also returning and so um is, is it um that the return is you actually go back to the original state or is it that you're like a spiral you're going back to a certain degree but then you're also moving on i would see it more as a spiral mm -hmm. um um because there's never a time when when the cycle stops. I mean, we don't go back to nothing. Um, right, but if you think of like the ancient um, Chinese uh, way of counting time or counting the years, even that is not completely linear. I mean, we have, it's not like now is 2020. I mean, in ancient China, it was the first year of this emperor and this year of that time. And it starts again with the new emperor. Yeah, yeah. So very good. So we have an, an intricate mixture of um, very profound concepts that Sharon explains in her contribution to our new volume, Dao and Time, Classical Philosophy. And um, we're very excited to be able to publish this. And we hope that everybody will come and look at this article. The um, volume again is called Tao and Time, Classical Philosophy. And you're able to find um, more information on it and also the total complete table of contents and the introduction 
more details on our website, um, which is threeprimespress.com. Thank you very much. Thank you.